Hi guys, it's Mark from Totally Silence Tech. Ryzen has finally landed at TST headquarters thanks to MSI for sending out AMD's 1700 8 core processor, their new Crate Gaming X370 motherboard, and this beastly Gaming X RX480. Today's video is going to be a build log running through all of the parts and finishing off with some benchmarks to see how the PC performs as well as pitting the 1700 against Intel's. 7700K. If we check out the build, first up let's take a look at the case. This is the Shogun E80X Super Mid Tower from BitPhoenix. This was sent out to me from the kind people at Overclockers UK and I'm glad they did. I love the look, especially the tempered glass side panels. The chassis is reasonably light, weighing in at 14 kilograms. Building inside this case was extremely easy, there's so many options with this case. At first I was a little put off with how much stuff was crammed inside multiple hard drive cages at the front, as well as GPU support brackets that I personally didn't like the look of. There's also a plate at the front that holds two SSDs, which is LED backlit. The cool thing is though, all of the extra parts are a breeze to strip out of the case, making the inside open and giving the build a very clean look. There's still plenty of options to mount SSDs, one on the floor next to the PSU mounting area, and two on the back of the case. Attaching an SSD was easy enough, although it would have been nice if the mounting brackets were toolless. At the front, the I.O. has a headphone and microphone jack, two USB 2.0 ports, a power button, another two USB but 3.0 ports, a reset switch, and lastly, a button to control the LED lighting I mentioned earlier. The case, unfortunately, does not come with a PSU shroud, although I quite like the classic look that the case brings. It means there's plenty of room at the front for a thick 360mm rad. The case is fairly large by today's standards, with a size of 56 centimeters in length, 52 centimeters in height, and 25 centimeters in width. Taking a look at the outside, the Shogun has a plastic front panel that's very easy to remove, exposing the front fans. The case comes included with two 120mm fans, but I decided to use my own. The top of the case is also well ventilated, removing the top cover there's room to mount three 120mm fans and a 360mm rad. The overall design of the case is very very nice, I love how it gives you plenty of options for storage, more than you will ever need. Moving on to the power supply I've used for this build, it's the Pure Power 10 from Be Quiet. It has an 80 plus silver efficiency, I'm fairly impressed with it so far, especially at its price point. It's extremely quiet, in fact I haven't heard the fan once. The PSU isn't fully modular, but the cables are very nice quality. No ketchup and mustard, just stealth black. I highly recommend this for anyone building on the budget, since it offers great value and solid performance. The graphics card in this build needs no introduction, of course it's the Gaming X RX 480 from MSI, the 4GB version. With a boost clock of 1360MHz, it will drive the latest AAA games extremely well at 1080p and 1440p no trouble at all. MSI's twin frozen cooler has always impressed me, it's right up there with the best of the best cooling solutions. It remains whisper quiet and never hits any higher than 65 degrees celsius under full load. The motherboard in this build is the Crate Gaming X370 from MSI. While not to my own personal tastes, I can see why it would be appealing, especially to anyone with a black and white build. Running through some of its features, the X370 Crate has an 8 plus 2 VRM design, supporting up to 64GB of DDR4 memory at 3200MHz, potentially higher once AMD opens up the memory code. It also has two 3.0x16 PCIe slots, allowing for more multiple graphics cards to be run in either Crossfire or SLI. For storage, the Crate X370 has six SATA 6 gigabit per second ports with RAID 0, 1, 10 support plus an M.2 slot. Moving on to the main event, the CPU inside this PC is AMD's Ryzen 7 1700 processor. It's the cheapest of the three new 8 core CPUs announced by AMD, and it's not far off the performance of its bigger brother, the 1800X once overclocked, making it the best bang for buck out of the three new 8 core CPUs from AMD. With a base clock of 3GHz and a boost clock of 3.7GHz, it will be more than enough for most games. Currently GPUs will generally bottleneck 
NEC way before you'll ever have to worry about any of the Ryzen CPUs currently released. It's not until you jump into CPU intensive games like Ashes of Singularity for example, you may start to see a slight reduction in performance compared to Intel 7700K. Nevertheless, the fact that the 1700 has so many cores, it makes it a great choice for people that not only game on their computer, but work as well. Overclocking on the 1700, let's face it, it's extremely important since its base clock is pretty low by today's standards. AMD's stock cooler is certainly up to the task, which is refreshing to see since Intel can't even be bothered to ship one with their latest CPUs anymore. Taking a quick look at the stock cooler, the Spire was extremely easy to install by just screwing in four screws to the AM4 backplate and connecting up the cable clearly to the CPU header. The Spire has a cool RGB ring running around the outside and currently I have it set to red, it's stock colour. It matches my build so well. You can connect up a second cable to the RGB header on your motherboard if you have one and customise the ring to your liking. Overclocking the 1700 to 4GHz wasn't an easy task. I had the Spire's fan at 100% load all the time, but it was still pretty quiet by the way. Unfortunately my system just kept crashing while stress testing with Ida64 and I've been so lucky with other processors in the past. The sweet spot I managed to achieve was 3.8 GHz at 1.35 volts. I had to push the voltage above 1.4 volts to achieve a 4 GHz overclock and I still don't think personally that was stable. If that was my own chip I certainly wouldn't run it like that all the time. At 3.8 GHz 1.35 volts the temperatures never hit above 76 degrees in Ida 64. The stock cooler did a fantastic job but ultimately if you want to overclock the 1700 to 4 GHz safely, cooling it with water would be the only way to go. So now you know what the CPU is running at and all of the other specs of this Ryzen build. Let's jump into some benchmarks and see how she performs. I haven't got this system for very long, so I try to do as many benchmarks as possible. So there you have it guys, for gaming the 1700 does a decent job. If you're thinking of picking up an 8 core Ryzen CPU, the only thing that might be a concern is how long you're going to keep it for. GPUs seem to be growing and growing in performance every year and once the bottleneck for the GPU has gone, you may start to see the limit of Ryzen's power regarding gaming, as most games clearly still prefer CPUs with more single core performance. Not to say the 1700 can't game, it sure can, but honestly I'd only recommend picking one up if you do extensive work tasks on your computer as well. That's when a CPU like the 1700 smashes the competition. Ultimately, that's exactly what AMD designed the 1700 to do, and it achieves it with flying colours. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed the build. I will see you very soon in the next video. Hopefully it will be another episode of Setup Refresh. I've been Mark from Totally Silence Tech. Goodbye.